former Olympic skier Bodie Miller and his wife Morgan suffered an unimaginable loss over the summer when their 19-month-old daughter Emmy drowned in a neighbor's pool. The family was not swimming at the time, just visiting a neighbor. And Morgan says her daughter somehow managed to get outside and into the pool. It happened in a matter of seconds. Well, we sat down with Bodie and Morgan back in July, and Morgan was still pregnant then with their baby boy. How are you thinking about the new baby and I mean the fact that you are going through this and creating life. That was my first concern. Um, besides the fact of never being able to see my daughter again, it was <laughs> every time. How am I supposed to bring a new baby into this world without with just losing my baby? And now we have the opportunity to get to love that baby, not only for ourselves, but for Emmy. Well, the Millers welcomed their son last month on October 5th, and Bodie is with us now. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a flood of emotions because as we were just talking about, it's, it's grief still, and now it's joy too. Yeah, I mean, if there's one thing that can kind of help to heal and fill that spot in your heart. It's a, it's a baby and he's, he's a special one. So it's been, a, besides the lack of sleep, um, <laughs> it's been a really nice process to, to be able to go through. There he is, he's adorable. He was a big baby, right? Almost 10 pounds? Yeah, nine, nine. My wife is, you know, you, we already knew she was, she was magical, but this was incredible. It really was and I don't, I, I, I actually have been texting you and trying to find out the baby's name. And as it turns out, it took you guys a little while to name him, right? Yeah, and we got all kinds of criticism for it, but it's just kind of the way. <laughs> Why? Because nice well, if you go in a hospital, you ha you can't leave the hospital. Yes. But at home birth, you can do whatever you want. So all the kids were going to school, and everyone's like, what's his name? And they're like, we don't really have, we just call him baby brother. And everyone thought we were just crazy. It took us three weeks, but I think once we, we got to, to, get know, to know him. him. Yeah, once we got to know him, it was really clear. Wait, so can we announce his name? Yeah, Easton Von Reck Miller. Aww, I think we kind of cheated because Va Von Miller, the yes. football player, is such a, he seems like such a unique dude, so I think we kind of we kind of. And you grew that. up in Easton, New Hampshire. Um, and then I think this is funny. You, I think you told our producer, so Rec is the middle name, which you spell R-E-K, which is a cool name, but you said that Morgan wasn't that nuts about it? No, she's <laughs> she's nuts about it not being his name. Um, <laughs> but, but you but prevailed. I, I, I pushed it through. Um, but I think we, we have a good compromise system, so. Yeah. So how, how are you guys doing? How are you We're, managing all of this? You know, I think it's there's a blessing to being so busy in a way. You kind of like your days go by really slow because there's just a lot of stuff and the kids and that kind of emotional strain is still there. But then the months just fly by. I think any parent can relate to that. And it's it's um, unbelievable. It's been six months since we lost Emmy. And then at the same time, seven weeks already um, for Easton. And it's, um, you know, I think we we see the path forward a little bit. It's just kind of keeping going and, and trying to stay positive but um but yeah it's you know it's not easy it's i don't think it gets that much easier no i mean easton i think was born one month before emmy would have turned mm -hmm. two years old and on on our neighbor's birthday which mm -hmm. i think was kind of special i think that was their it's nice to have a birthday buddy yeah i got the pleasure of meeting you in your home over the summer and i could just see that Emmy's presence was still so felt, just everywhere and everything and by everybody. Yeah, and the, and the kids talk about her all the time, which I think is really good, but obviously hard too. But I mean, we, we have to, she's, yeah, she's everywhere in our house, you notice it. So yeah. we definitely, um, you know, you feel the loss, but I think it's just, she's still a part of our family. Well, I wanna talk about drowning, cause that's one of the reasons that you guys have been open and shared your grief. You are on a mission, you and Morgan, to really get people to be more aware about the number one killer of children. And they're, they're, actually the statistics were better this summer. What do you what do you think that's about? I mean, I you kind of hope that maybe it had an effect that people yeah. were listening. Yeah, I mean, you always you always hope that what you're doing is. Um, I mean, I think there was some catharsis to it as well, but we wanted to try to affect change. And I think, you know, while statistics probably won't really reflect the right stuff for years because that's the way statistics yeah. work, but um, we definitely noticed in our area just the awareness. People people were paying attention to it more, and I think you know my call to action was always for people to address it with their pediatricians. I think that's the missing link that's the most sort of easy to address is I'd never heard about it from a pediatrician and I'd gone to so many wellness visits that it was, it started to be a little bit ridiculous that the number one thing had never been brought up. So 
I sort of am still encouraging parents to go into their pediatrician, just bring it up, you know, in the nice way. You don't have to be harsh about it. But it seems crazy to me that that part hadn't been done before. And I think, um, you know, I think parents are just, you know, no one, no one wants to be negligent. I mean, that, I don't think we were. It's really one of those things. I think it's more about directing some energy into areas where um, it can affect change. And I think that, that pediatrician-patient relationship is really a, a powerful one. And if it's done right, can really affect things. It's really about vigilance and the intensity behind the conversation. And, and you're here in New York, and we're so happy to see you, but you have a really good cause, which is um, the Turtle Ridge Foundation, which is your foundation and helps young people with disabilities get some athletic equipment. And you're having a poker night tonight. Yeah. So first of all, I didn't know you played poker. Uh, I don't play well. Although, uh, <laughs> so sign up because there's still spaces. You can beat Bodie. Yeah, we want, we want people to come out. And you can come and just hang out. It's going to be great. It's at Stout, um, which is we were there before, and they were amazing to us. And the tournament's really more fun. I think if somebody who actually knew how to play came, they would probably just mop the floor with my New Hampshire crowd. Um, but, no, it's the Turtle Ridge Foundation has been really important to me. And, actually, we're, we're still even – we affect some of the stuff with drowning as well through TRF because we – we donate money to that and then can mostly for swim lessons and things where people just don't have the money if they're willing to try to make the steps. But, um, yeah, the foundation now we're in, our, I think, 16th year. Yeah. So um, really important for With, me. It's doing really good work. Turtle Ridge Foundation, you can still sign up for the poker night and beat Bodie who admits he's not good at poker. <laughs> My poker face is right here. Yes, I get exactly. Good cards. That's what I do. It's so good to see you. Give our love Thank to you. your beautiful family. And it's nice to see you in person. And if you want more information on the fundraiser, we put it all on our website, today.com.